Hey, it's Don the Auction Professor. We're a day late on our What Sold on Sunday video, so we're going to put it out today, Monday, but here we go with what we sold last week. Now, here we are with the first item. This is a token. Now, this was a big fad back then. You could go to a fair, a festival, banks, all over the place, and they'd give you what's called an encased penny. It's encased with a marketing ploy on the outside of it, so they technically haven't altered the coin itself, and you could still technically remove it if you wish. I sell a ton of these. I've sold probably 50 or 60 of these in the last couple of years. They do sell very well, and most every one that I have, regardless of the age, still sells. I had somebody tell me they only sell if they're um, wheat pennies, and this is 1970, which is not a wheat penny. So anyway, good sale, 20 bucks, paid a dollar for it. Now, I sold a bunch of labels, and I do mean a bunch, so I'm just going to show you quite a few real quick here. I'm not going to make this a super long video uh, this week, because i got a lot of stuff going on. So these, on average, I sold these for around $14.50 a piece across the board. So I'm going to show you a bunch of these. This is just some of what we sold in these labels. I sold many more than this, believe it or not. So this is the first one, Roller Dome, uh, Reynoldsville, second one. Uh, third one, this is California. And again, $14 average price on these. Uh, another one from Maine here. Now, the ones I'm showing you are just from two different sales. So I've sold some singly as well. But again, people buy multiple items from me. Just as I'm showing you, these just all sold within the same day to two different people keeps going and again i sold more than this i'm just not going to bore you with everyone this one was pretty cute too i thought the uh scotty dog on this one next one's two independent comic books from 1975 it's issue one and issue two of this comic book so 24.50 i paid 50 cents a piece for those independents and i get them quite often now, here's DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C. I kind of know where this is. Uh, it did sell for 20 bucks, just a perfect example of what a postcard sells for. And again, I zoomed in on this one here as well, too. So we're still in the process of fixing some of our listings. So we'll probably have a sell bright um, update here in the next couple weeks at the latest uh, as we progress with this. So anyway, next one here is a tobacco card. This would have been in... A pack of tobacco or probably given away at the counter advertising by this next time the railroad boy so just another example of that era of stuff 1870s 1880s here's just a doll growing hair Chrissy doll I paid a dollar for this we sold it for 15 next one here are some die cut cherubs now, this person bought, and it's got some damage. You can see a foot missing. Um, I think there was two feet missing, maybe. Uh, there's some close-ups of them as well, too. So, This person's from Japan. He bought four lots of these die-cut uh, little tiny pieces. He does artwork or something, the way it sounds to me. Uh, he's bought several of these lots like this before in the past. Maybe once or twice a month he does. Japan, for some reason, these little cherubs and die-cut little cutesy things seem to sell over there fairly regularly. Almost as much uh, over there as is being purchased from people here in the U.S. on these types of items, which is kind of interesting. Now, the next one's a Raphael Tuck. This is a movable figure. It's damaged. It's got a big rip down the middle. It's literally separated. It's got a missing hand, creases. It's still a rare item. Had this not been damaged, um, the arms move for one thing. It, it would have sold for a real pretty penny, probably 100 bucks or better. I would imagine someone's going to repair this. I just didn't want to mess with it. Because once you obliterate the back where the Raphael Tuck sign is, it's hard to show that that's what this is. So anyway, it sold for um, $18.50, literally, the exact price I had on it. Kind of surprised. I figured an offer would have come in on that first. Now, the next one here is a Statue of Liberty trade card. Liberty enlightening the world is basically what is the sign of peace and everybody's welcome. This was a big symbol back then. Um, I did sell this one for 20 bucks shipped, so I was pretty happy with that. Again, these are about the size of a postcard, literally. Postcards, three and a half by five and a half. This is three by five and a half, which are the same size as postcards. So many times you can find stuff like this in big lots of postcards. 
Next one here is a postcard. I sold a mess of Easter ones. I could have showed you just a nice long section of Easter postcards, um, but I've been showing them pretty much in almost every week, so didn't really want to do that. This one was pretty interesting. It was a cute little cherub. It has a winch back, if you're not familiar. Those five squares on either corner with the leaves up there are a typical of uh, John Winch. Can't say for sure. Um, probably should have put that in the title. Either way, it's still sold for $12.50, which is what I was asking for it. Next one's a 1943 Popular Photography Vintage Magazine. It's got a World War II uh, photographer, war photographer on the cover. So $17.50, real nice condition. Um, it sat for a little while, but I'm fine. I still, I paid a dollar or less for this magazine here. Another postcard. Uh, this one went for 15 bucks on this one. Uh, Forest Beach Camp, New Buffalo, Michigan. I was fine with that. Laurel and Hardy film, $14.99. That's what this one sold for. I've been selling these um, pretty much every week. I sell a few actual movies. Uh, so this is something that you'll put up a bunch if you get a huge assortment of them. You'll sell some right away. And then from there on out, you'll have a residual income from these types of material. At least that's what I, I have happen with these. Now this one here came from an optometrist's case that I bought. It was um, actually repairable pieces, a ton of lenses and things to actually swap out and it had a ton of these tags in it. And I've been selling these for quite some time. 10 to 20 bucks a piece is what I average on these. I sold several more of these now. They're brand new. They've never been used. Anybody having a vintage pair of Balsh and Lam and wanting to set up something or wanting to keep as original as they can get would want this. A display case and museums have bought these from me before. It's a pretty interesting item. It's a foil, uh, all metal label with a paper backing on it. And here's just another one as well. They're really small, as you can see. They're three quarters of an inch uh, wide and maybe two and a half inches or two, yeah, about two and a half inches tall. So, And this is on for 14 and one tenth 12 karat gold, which is what these were advertising. Another postcard. I took 20 on this. This has been up for a while. The missions in California just don't go for a ton of money unless it's something really odd. This wasn't that odd, so I'm happy with that. This was a 50 cent card. Wasn't up very long either, too. So now back to the labels again. I purchased a whole bunch from someone's collection. These look like they were samples. At one time, you could write a company and they would mail you labels and they would stamp sample in it so it couldn't be used or sold and if you look very closely you can actually see little tiny holes in it and that's just the word sample this is a typical example of what you'd find i got somebody who bought a couple of them and then he's coming back and he's been buying some ever since he was surprised that they were legit and you know the whole works left a real nice feedback on everyone and he just came back and bought some more. And I've got a couple people who do that, that buy these types of labels. They put a collection together. They want every Jim Beam that's out there, something along that line. And this person bought three of them at this one time. $17.50 a piece on these. Various different makes and, and um, types of uh, whiskey and such forth, too. So rather interesting. Here's a vintage Girl Scout pin. Now, I took 10 bucks on this. It's a tiny, tiny little pin. Um, there's glue on the back. It had some issues. It's been around for a while. So if somebody wanted it for 10 I think that's pretty fair considering the condition. So I threw a price up there. There's nothing to compare some of these items to. But I know from you know past experience which ones sell for a super high amount because of how the eagle looks, or I should say how the trifoil looks. If it has an eagle, it's usually better. If it has seven stars or better, it's usually a better piece. Usually the typical ones have four on the eagle's shield and the Girl Scout pins. So anyway, 10 bucks on that one. Uh, this is a little lot of bookmarks, and they did sell for $18.50. Somebody had asked about bookmarks, so I thought I would throw this in there. I sell bookmarks probably every week. I sell a lot or two, sometimes four, five, six, seven lots of bookmarks, just bookmarks. They sell routinely, all year round, no matter what. This one went to England, so they spent $18.50 on the item, and then they spent $14.75, I think is what the shipping is to England from where we're at. 
Um, so again, they spent some money on these. There's four of them. They're Victorian, 1870s, early 1880s. Really nice item. Never been touched. Um, literally looks like they just were printed the other day. Not, of course, they're vintage originals. Now, here is a tobacco silk. Now, this person here bought this one, and they bought another one, which I'll show you in a few moments. It did go for 45 bucks. It's the smaller size silk. Pretty decent condition. It's got some fraying, as you can see on the top. The discoloration didn't save it, and the sides, the same thing. So it has some issues. That's typical what you find. Even when these sometimes are new, they'll have issues like that. So 45 bucks on this one. Another roller skating rink label. This is from another person. 20 bucks on this one. Now this one here did sell for 75. This is another silk. Now the next one here is another lot of these. Now if you look in last week's what sold, you'll see I sold another set of these for 45. This is the second set of these stamps for 45 bucks. Again, I had a ton of them. I separated them so it's one of each color of the same building. And it seems to sell as a topical collection. Um, somebody will want it for a collection on a wall or they liked that building or they're putting a display together. These items sell fairly well. This would be a fantasy piece a Cinderella, so to speak, a poster stamp as well. They're regular stamp sized, so it's just a typical example of what we do sell. I've got nothing into this, and I've got a ton of these that we've sold for the last year and a half. A couple of these every month I've been selling. So again, you invest a little bit here, and then it trickles on out through a uh, length of time. Usually you get your money back immediately if you've got some good items. It just works for us that way. And again, I, I sell all kinds of stuff. I didn't show you any records. I sold a bunch of records. We sold some 8mm, 16mm, slides, um, postcards, books, magazines, sheet music, toys, plenty of toys, a couple pieces of glassware, uh, movie collectibles, stills, military stills, military uh, booklets. Jeez, I've sold a lot of stuff this week. So, And that's just the stuff that's collectible and stuff, not counting anything that may be wholesale or Amazon or any of that other aspect that we do. So, Last one here did go for $12.50. This is about one inch by an inch and a half or so. It's just a small little sticker that would have been stuck onto a, a mail, a piece of mail or something like that. This would be like something if you were writing a private letter back in the day and you wanted it there quickly, American Airlines would have delivered it to the next city stop while they were flying passengers and they would charge you a set fee and then it would be picked up by them and dropped off probably within the local post office and the local post office would finish off the delivery or the airline itself would deliver it. I'm not sure how it all worked. It's not really the issue here. The issue is what it was. So, but anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. Those are some of the items that we did sell. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.